Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can use adjustment clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 in order to reuse effects or animations that you create for yourself, and in the end we'll be saving them to power bins, which are a really easy way to reuse them across projects. So let's go ahead and start by jumping over to the edit page and adding a clip to the timeline. So let's just bring this in here onto video track one. So here we have a pretty normal shot of a campfire and someone going to pour some hot tea or water into a cup. Let's go ahead and add an adjustment clip and see what we could do with this for fun. So you can find adjustment clips over in the effects library and then you go down to toolbox effects and then adjustment clip is up here. So under the same category of fusion composition. So if you want to add an adjustment clip to the timeline, you simply need to drag the adjustment clip and then make sure it's on a video track above your main video clip so that the adjustment clip will apply over it. So depending on if you want the adjustment clip to apply over only part of your underlying clip, or if you want it to be stretched across the entire duration of the clip, so up to you what you want to set the duration for, but if you want to expand the duration, just click on the right side of the adjustment clip and drag it to expand its duration. You can also stretch out the left side in the same way. So now the adjustment clip has the same duration and time in the timeline as the bottom clip, which means anything we put into this adjustment clip is going to apply over this entire duration. So adjustment clips in Resolve are really powerful because you can animate just about any property inside of them, and it will apply the change in value here over the bottom clips. So we can go to any property basically over here that has a keyframe diamond, this little gray diamond, and we can keyframe it and then animate it over a duration. And what we'll really be animating are the underlying clips. For instance, we could animate crop left and crop top to create an animation that would be really similar to one of the transitions you would find in video transitions. So let's go ahead and try that. So what I'll do is find a position a few seconds into the clip to have the ending keyframe for our little animation. And I'm going to keyframe crop left and crop top here. Now we can go to the first frame in this adjustment clip and we can set a crop left crop top value and then it will animate between and then it's going to animate between those two values. So let's put a crop left. Um, you know what, let's just go all the way across. So I'm going to do crop left at that value crop top at this value. And what these values really mean is that the entire image has been cropped out from left to right and also from top to bottom. So as we animate from this value to the original value of zero, it's going to be going in reverse. So let's go ahead and hit play here. And now you'll see this little animation from the cropping effect. And what's really cool about this is that we can take this adjustment clip, put it anywhere and have the exact same effect play no matter what the bottom clip is. So I'm going to take the media pool and grab one more clip from it. So I'll just put it here in the timeline. I'll select the adjustment clip and I'll copy it with control C and then going over here to the start of this clip, hit control V and I'll hit control V to paste it in. So now if we go to the start of this clip, you can already see everything's already cropped out. If I go ahead and hit play, then we'll have the exact same animation occur on this completely different clip. So in essence, we've basically made a custom transition. So what we might want to do with this specific clip is to limit its duration to be where the animation actually ends. So I might expand this little keyframe indicator um, on the bottom right of an adjustment clip, go to where the final keyframe is, since that's where the animation is. And now I will trim the right side of this so that the adjustment clip is really only this animation and nothing else. Okay, and I'll just do the same thing over here as well. So now let's add some extra effects on a second adjustment clip layer. So if you really want in Resolve, you can have many video tracks. You're not limited to one or two. So we can easily go to the effects library, go down to effects and add in a new adjustment clip onto layer three. And maybe with this adjustment clip, we really do want it to apply to the full duration underneath it. So I'm going to expand it down here and we'll and now we can apply our effects onto this adjustment clip. So of course you can change the video properties in the inspector for simple animations, but you can also apply effects onto an adjustment clip layer. So if I go into open effects, then we can find a bunch of tools that we can use here. For instance, we can scroll way down to something like light rays, and we can see how it'll look on the video clip. Now it's not gonna preview right on the adjustment clip. So if you wanna see the preview, uh, select the underlying clip 
and then hover over light rays. And then you can see what the light rays effect might look like. Uh, because there's no video information on the adjustment clip layer itself, that's why you get it to show in black and white. But if we want light rays to be a reappliable effect, then we can just drag the light rays in here. And it's going to apply to the underlying clip. So now we can go to effects on the adjustment clip layer and we can modify this light rays until we get the custom settings that we'd want to be able to save and reapply for later. So for instance, we might want to be changing the position where the light rays are coming from. By default, it's around right here above the video. We can actually see that as a visual indicator by clicking on this drop down and then going to open effects overlay. And then any open effects you have applying on the clip, ones that do have a gizmo that's modifiable, you'll be able to see that. So for instance, I can change the position where the light rays are coming from by dragging this around. So it's a really cool visual indicator here. So maybe I want it to be from about there. And maybe I also decide I want the length of those light rays to be even longer so that the effect is a little more pronounced. So we can just change the sliders a little bit here. Maybe I don't want it to be too soft. I do want to be able to see the rays. And then maybe lower the brightness down just a tad and make it a little more subtle. If I want to see how it looks before and after, I can toggle the light rays on and off. So let's say that this is the effect I was going for. I just want an adjustment clip that uh, has this open effect. Note, you can definitely apply more than one. So if I wanted to add something like, um, I don't know, a, a Gaussian blur, I can just put that on there and make the whole scene more blurry. So now we have two effects on one adjustment clip layer. So you're definitely able to get more complex and add a bunch of stuff laying on top of each other. Or you can have each effect be on a separate adjustment clip layer if you prefer. Anyway, if we want to take this adjustment clip layer and bring it over here to this second video clip, I can just control C go to the first frame uh, using snapping helps with that and then control V paste it in and all of a sudden we should have light rays on this video clip now this clip doesn't have any bright regions like the first one does there's not really any sunlight so you might need to adjust the adjustment clip layer by lowering the threshold to get those light rays to come back in so you can always make minor changes like this uh, even if you bring in a copy of an adjustment clip all right, so hopefully that kind of shows the power of reusing the adjustment clips. You can just have the same effect reapplied over and over again. Uh, now you're going to want to save it so that you can use it in future projects if you think that whatever effect you came up with is really handy and cool. So how you can do that is to expose power bins to show up over here in the media pool. So if we go to view on the top menu, uh, there's a lot of options here. Power bins is really close to the bottom right below smart bins which is checked by default so power bins are going to pop up over here on the left so items and power bins are accessible across any of your video projects uh, tied to your computer username so we can bring items in here such as an adjustment clip or a fusion composition if you went ahead and made a bunch of nodes in the fusion editor for more complicated effects and anytime we want to reuse them we can just drag a copy of the effect we want to save so let's say this first one with the original uh, source threshold, and we just drag it into our power bin. So just like that, we have an effect that we can put in any video project pretty much. If you have a bunch of effects in your power bin master, you may decide that you want to add uh, bins or folders that you can organize them into. So you can right click here and add a new bin. So maybe we call this uh, adjustment and then you can have one for fusion compositions, for instance, however you want to organize it. And now let's go ahead and add in uh, that little animation with the cropping we did as well. So we pop this in here. And then we have two adjustment clips. Uh, now, when you add them in, it's probably a good idea to rename them. So I know that this one is the cropping effect. So I'm going to rename that right now by clicking on the name. I'll just call this something like uh, crop fade in. And then the other effect here. Uh, we can call light rays preset one. All right, cool. And maybe I'll organize these into the adjustment clips. So just like that, I have a couple effects saved for future projects. Let's go ahead and create a new project. Okay, so now we're in a new project called AC adjustment clip test, and we have a new video clip. So I'm just going to pop this into the timeline. And as you can see, we still have the power bins exposed here. If for some reason you don't see it, you can always go to view and then show power bins to get it to show up again. You can go to adjustment clips here. So now we can just come in here to the adjustment clips power bin, drag our adjustment clip onto the uh, video track too, so that it applies above our uh, bottom clip. We can go to effects, verify that all of the settings are the 
include the changes that we made. And we can see the light rays kind of showing there on the screen. So I can toggle this off if I want to see the before and after. And maybe we change a couple settings here to more fit this clip. And now we could also change the duration of our light rays preset. But now with just a couple simple steps, we've brought in the same effect, popped it in here and adjusted it to a new project. So that's obviously going to be even more handy if your presets have multiple effects inside of one adjustment clip layer. So uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this video on adjustment clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. Hopefully you can see how powerful they can be to adjust underlying clips and to reuse the same effects across various locations in your video. One more thing I can point out is that if you have multiple video clips underneath your adjustment clip layer, like this, if the duration stretches across two or more clips, it'll still apply the same effect across all of them. So you can even use an adjustment clip layer to have the same effect across two shots, but with only one adjustment clip. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be it for this video about adjustment clips and DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.